Uh, hello everyone, uh, welcome back. Uh, as part of a series of video lectures on rock mechanics and starter control. Uh, today I'm going to, uh, uh, let's recap what we had discussed so far. Uh, like uh, in uh, earlier uh, last video, we had discussed about uh, numerical problems and uh, major and uh, uh, minor numerical problems and major and uh, common minor principal stresses. And we also discussed about the angle of a principal plane. Like what is principal plane? And uh, what are the values of how to compute uh, major and minor principal stress values? And uh, then we also discussed about the various physical mechanical properties of the rock mass, like uh, the properties of the rock mass which are in physical nature, as well as the properties of the rock mass which can be uh, determined in the laboratory. They are also known as the mechanical properties of the rock. Uh, look at uh, let's recap it in case of what you call uh, as part of physical properties, right? We discussed about. Uh, what is the bulk strength, uh, bulk density, and what is density? What is bulk density? What is porosity? Uh, void ratio of the sample and the relation between the porosity void ratio of the sample. Uh, what is uh, next? Moisture content, degree of saturation. Uh, next, uh, uh, thermal uh, electrical properties, thermal properties. Uh, these are uh, various uh, topics we discussed uh, as part of their video lecture. Okay. Now, uh, as part of uh, Current like current video lecture, okay. These are the what you call uh, uh, learning outcome. The this video lecture, like uh, yeah, as part of this lecture, video lecture, okay. We are going to discuss various numerical problems on determination of effective strain along a given direction based on the stresses acting on the plane. Because as part of the second chapter, we discussed about the relation between uh, vertical stress, uh, vertical stress, and the lateral stress, and also the uh, what would be the corresponding lateral strain or the lateral strain in the low when the forces are acting in the vertical direction so the relation between the vertical strain as well as the uh, lateral strain so keeping uh, those uh, basic concepts in view let us solve uh, some prop some numerical problems on it then once we are done with the topic uh, then uh, like we'll move on to the preparation of the rack sample because uh, this is part of the third chapter like how exactly the rack, rack sample has to be prepared and then what are the standards uh, that we need to follow like uh, based on ISRM standards. ISRM is nothing but International Society for Rock Mechanics. Okay, so that international, which is an international organization, which basically uh, like specifies uh, what are the standards that we need to follow uh, for the preparation of the rack sample. Okay, uh, next, uh, like we are going to discuss about the basic understanding because uh, what are the experiments uh, that we are going to what are what are the topics that we are going to uh, discuss as part of in determination of uh, mechanical properties of the rock rock mass okay we'll be using the universal testing machine so uh, before we discuss those topics let us understand like uh, what are the various uh, components of the universal testing machine there's nothing but utf <coughs> and uh, what are the various operations that we can perform using utf okay and how it operates then uh, we'll discuss the uh, a small topic uh, if time permits like a determination of unconfined or uniaxial compressive strain. What is uh, unconfined? As this uh, term itself indicates, itself indicates uniaxial. That's nothing but the force uh, itself uh, will be acting only in unidirectional. So that's why it is called unconfined compressive. The, the compressive forces or the compressive forces acting on a unidirectional of a given rock specimen. Okay, then it is uh, and there will not be any lateral stresses. Then such a uh, strength calculation is known as uniaxial compressive strain. Okay, let's move on uh, back to the what you call numerical problems, right? Okay, let us discuss this. A, a coal block is of cubical shape, having length of 100, it is of cubical shape, having length 100 mm. 100 mm, that's nothing but 10 centimeter length. I have taken a small cubical coal block. Okay, 100 mm. So he is subjected to various forces as shown in the figure. Various forces. Assuming the Young's modulus of uh, elasticity E is equal to 5 to 10 to the power of 9 newtons per meter square. Next, the Poisson's ratio of this particular sample is given as mu, is given as what? 0 0.35. <coughs> now we need to calculate what would be the effective strain along x axis. So look at here. Uh, in this diagram, right? This is x axis, this is y axis, and this is z axis. So the force that is acting along this direction, this is called 
this is called what you call the force acting in x direction this one right let's see uh, this is how it is going to be connotate one direction y direction z direction yeah this is what so uh, if you look at this diagram uh, the stress uh, the force which is acting along x direction is of 100 kilonewtons since the arrows is outside of the block mass they are of tensile in nature okay next one the forces which are acting along y direction they are of what 150 kilonewtons they are again of uh, tensile in nature okay and the force which are acting forces which are acting on the block mass along z axis this one okay see how much it is 80 kilonewtons now as part of uh, this problem numerical problem uh, we are asked to find out given the young small size poison ratio and the dimensions of the cube we are asked to find out what would be the effective strain along x axis x is nothing but this one epsilon x we know the definition of uh, what do you call the uh, the formula for Young's modulus is equal to what? It's the ratio of stress to the strain. So now strain is equal to what? From that, st strain is equal to stress by Young's modulus. Okay. So if I, if I wanted to, uh, here I have asked to find out what would be the strain, effective strain along this one. Okay. Due to application of these forces along x axis, y axis, and the z axis, there will be corresponding deformation in respect to direction. But I am asked to find out what exactly effective strain long x axis. This is what exactly I was supposed to find out. Then what to do? So, definitely, if the in this direction, the strains along the other direction, they are going to be what? Lateral directions. So, we need to convert the strains of the deformation along the y direction, z direction with respect to along z axis. We are sorry, with respect to x axis. That's what exactly along x direction I am supposed to calculate it. So for that purpose, we'll be using what Poisson's ratio. So the definition of Poisson's ratio, if you look at, if you go through the uh, what do you call uh, earlier video lecture, and if you try to recollect it, what is the definition of Poisson's ratio? It is the ratio of lateral strain to the longitudinal strain. That is what exactly the Poisson's ratio. Okay. So which is equal to the ratio of what lateral lateral strain to the longitudinal strain is nothing but poison ratio. I wanted to find out the lateral strain, then what to do now? Um, multiplied with poison ratio, the strain along the deformation or the strain along the longitudinal direction will be written by corresponding. What called lateral strain direction? The same concept which I'm going to use. Now, see to calculate effective strain. So what happened now? If I apply the force due to application of the force along this direction and along this direction, so there will be a deformation in this mass along this direction. Okay, right? it's trying to play. Whereas the other direction also, what happened? Is trying to what? Uh, what called pull the same? Uh, trying to deform the rock mass in their respective uh, respective direction because. The forces that are acting there are of what? Tensile in nature. They are all of tensile in nature. Here it is tensile. This also is tensile. So due to application of this force on the direction, what happened, right? Even though it is trying to elaborate like this, it will try to what you call uh, elaborate like this. Now what happened? There is a corresponding deformation in the other direction. That's nothing but uh, there will be uh, uh, what you call due to application of this force. Whatever the necessary strain that it produces along this direction, it's get reduced because it will try to pull this one along the respective directions. So, in order to find out what you call the effective strain along x axis, what do you need to do? Strain along x axis minus 
the lateral strain because this with uh, this strain we need to what you call determine with respect to this lateral direction we need to find out so the lateral strain of this along this direction lateral strain of this minus the lateral strain of z axis this one this we need to do why minus sign because see this sign convention we need to follow and we need to observe very carefully see whether uh, due to application of the force in the other lateral direction whether it is going to increase the deformation along that particular direction or the direction which we are asked to we are supposed to calculate it or we are asked to calculate it let's say in this case it is x axis is there any deformation change in deformation increase in deformation along this direction or decrease in deformation along this, this direction okay that's what we are supposed to find out suppose let's say if it this is favoring favoring is nothing but suppose let's say your force is suppose the force is something like this instead of tensile let's say these uh, these forces are compressive let's say this force is compressive so what happened now it is trying to pull this and this is also trying to what uh, what you call the reduce the dimension along the same direction right which will add that so in in such a situations the deformation is going to be what deformation along this direction plus deformation along this because this is a, an addition to that deformation along this direction this is aiding the deformation along this particular direction due to the application of the force in this direction but in this situation since the okay, here, let me reiterate this is very very important let me clear okay this is very very important uh, if you look at here this is of this this is of this so i am supposed to i am asked to calculate what you call the effective strain along x axis what to do now so in order to calculate this there will be deformation due to application of this force and there will be a de effective deformation due to application of this there will be a deformation due to application of this as well as this am i right okay now i need to find out this what happened right uh, okay this is trying to pull like this okay in this direction due to application of force in the lateral direction what happens it won't cause uh, what it will try to reduce the deformation along this direction so that is the reason what we should do now the effective strain along x axis is equal to the strain along x axis minus the corresponding the lateral strain due to application why minus sign because it is not favoring to this direction it is not adding anything it is trying to pull in you know, in their respective direction as a result there will be reduction in deformation so we need to subtract that so that's what exactly it is so due to application of this uh, tensile forces what is it, what it does now so it is try to pull like this so uh, in order to calculate the effective strain along x axis that's uh, which is equal to the strain along x axis minus the corresponding lateral strain along uh, in the other directions like uh, what you call in this case y and z directions so in order to calculate the lateral strain direction we need to calculate the what you call effective strain angle along this direction and if i multiply it with the poisson's ratio i'll be, be converting into the lateral strain that's what exactly i wanted so minus of this and minus of this that's what exactly this is how we are going to solve this problem okay look at here let's move on look at here let me bring this one down so let me Look at here. So our all compressive nature. We need to find out this right? force per unit area that will give stress. Force per unit area. So it is of what dimension? Some shape of how much? Hundred length, hundred mm. It's of cube. Cube is nothing but all dimensions are equal. So what is the stress now? Force is nothing but along this direction. Hundred kilo newtons. Hundred into kilo means nothing but ten to the power of three or thousand divided by what is the area of this? Hundred by hundred mm. Right. So those many newtons per mm square. Right? so that's what exactly we have to plan to resolve see here stress along x axis x direction sigma x is equal to force along x axis divided by the corresponding cross sectional area ax so 100 kN 100 into kilo means 1000 divided by 100 into 100 because it's a cube so newtons for so those many newtons because this is in kilo newtons we are converting into newtons so newtons 10 newtons per mm square and which is a tensile in nature Similarly, stress along y direction, sigma y, stress along y direction, sigma y is equal to force along y direction by the corresponding cross sectional area. So force is in that case what it was uh, what you call uh, 
150 kilonewtons. So 150 multiplied by 1000 divided by what is the cross because it's a cuboid, right? So what is the cross sectional area? 100 into 100 of that particular surface. So which is how this many newtons per mm square, which is uh, if I, upon simplifying this, we'll be getting 15 newtons per mm square, which is again of tensile nature. Uh, this should be z, sorry, this should be z direction. Okay, stress along the z direction. Okay. Stress along z direction is equal to Fz by Az. It's nothing but uh, in this case, Okay, yeah. So along z direction, sigma z is equal to so this stress that is about 80 kilonewtons means 80 into thousand kilo means thousand. Why right? the that's particular surface which is nothing but 100 mm into 100 mm. So if I simply upon simplifying this, it is 80 newton per meter square. And the Poisson's ratio, which is a mu or 1 by m, is equal to 0.35. So effective strain along x direction, this is equal to see stress by strain is equal to x minus. So strain is equal to stress by Young's modulus, right? In their respective direction. So stress by Young's modulus. Okay, sorry, this is okay. This should be sigma. Sorry. Okay, correct. Uh, this is what uh, sigma x by uh, e and uh, sigma i by e. Yeah, this I should use sigma here. Okay, just to keep that. This these are sigma. Sigma x by e. That's not but sigma x is nothing but 10 by e minus uh, 15 into 1 by m is how much? 0.35. The other direction. Why minus? Because here we'll let's try to understand this concept. Because the other direction, what are the deformation that uh, due to application of the forces in various uh, other directions? Okay, it is not uh, what it, it is trying to reduce the deformation along x because the uh, it is trying to pull it out in the in the other respective direction, not along the required direction. That's not but x. It's not favoring this direction. So that is the reason. Okay, minus of this and the minus of uh, this is eight into one by m is nothing but 0.35 by e. So this is in newton per meter square. So nothing but if I want in newtons, uh, sorry, newton per mm square. So if I wanted to convert into newtons per meter square, so it should be definitely uh, ten square and ten to the power of minus four, right? In in, uh, in the denominator. If I take this one to our numerator, it is 10 to the power of 4. Okay, that's what exactly it is. Look at here. I just convert into Newton per meter square, 1.95. Okay, upon simplifying this into 10 to the power of 4. Because why 10 to the power of 4k? Okay? Because I have converted this Newton per mm square into Newton per meter square divided by what I can, uh, Young's modulus is how much? 5 to 10 to the power of 9. So upon simplifying this one, the value which I am going to be uh, which I am going to get it is how much it is? 0. 0 0.0039. Uh, must be correct. Okay. Yeah, I'll correct this one. This must be possible. 0.0039 mm. This is what exactly the effective strain along x axis is. Hope uh, you guys got it. What exactly I mean to say. So here you need to understand the concept. Basically, I'm trying to emphasize more on concept here. You need to understand this concept. Why negative? What are the sign convention that we? Everyone remembers this formula. The only thing is which sign convention we need to use. That is very very important here. Okay. Next, uh, let us uh, move on to another uh, another small uh, example. Let's uh, solve try to solve another example. A rectangular block of coal uh, or a rectangular coal block. Dimension how much? 250, 100 mm, and the 80 mm is subjected to axial load as shown in the figure. So in this case, what happened? Look at here. This is x direction. This is y direction. And this is z direction, right? So, okay. Let's see here. So let me draw this just to simplify this one. Okay. 
this is along x axis okay this is along the y axis this is along z axis so this is y this is x this is z here it has given z so don't get conf confused this is x he has given here this is y and this is z okay right so this is about x x direction this is on x and this is y this is z so x, x y z so there are all three different directions and he has given and the dimensions of the block is almost 250 by 250 mm by 100 mm by 80 mm that's what it is now we are asked to find out effective strain along y-axis nothing but along this direction if you look at here what are the normal forces or the stresses that are forces that are acting on respective faces of the block is along x direction it is of what you call tensile in nature because the arrow is outside and along z axis also along z direction it is also uh, it's, uh, it is of tensile nature whereas along y direction it is of compressive nature now you are asked to find out what would be the effective strain along this one direction. so because here here it is not increasing due to application of this strain or stress or the force okay force applied over this area that's called stress right due to application of this force along y direction there will not be any change in its deformation. There will be a reduction in its size. This size gets reduced. Am I right? Um, right here. This size. This size is going to reduce because we are going to apply. Okay, this for forces of compressive nature. So there will be a reduction in this. So if, if there is an increase in this one, then the strain would be positive. But what happened? Since there is a reduction in strain, definitely it will be negative. But you were asked to find out the what? Y-axis. Definitely it is negative. And this direction is also because you are asked along this direction, not the other direction, right? So definitely this is also uh, the unknown, uh, the direction we, uh, like uh, what you call, uh, the direction which I am supposed to calculate. The, it's the other direction of it. So this is also going to be a negative because it's not as this itself for what you call not supporting me because it's not elongating around this direction. It is and due to application of the compressive forces, there will, there will be a reduction in its dimension. Right? Same way when I pull out this like this, this direction. What happened now? It will further reduce this one. Right? Next, when I pull out this also, it will further reduce this. That's nothing but this direction is also reducing. This direction is also reducing, along this direction is also reducing. The effective one is going to be the negative. That's what it is. In the earlier case, look at here. Let me compare this one with the earlier one. Okay, so try to understand this. Uh, this is very, very important uh, because, uh, okay, look at here. This is of what all the forces are of what you call tensile in nature. So there will be elongation this, along this, along this. So definitely the force, I mean, if, uh, here the effective, I'm, uh, uh, what you call the, uh, as part of this problem, uh, like what I'm supposed to calculate it, the effective strain along x-axis. There's nothing but along 100 kilometers. So it will try to increase this one. But what happens? These two forces will reduce it. That's what, that is the reason. This is a positive sign for me, but these two are negative. So that is the reason if you look at the formula, see here, this is positive, this is negative, and negative of that, and which I have converted into the lateral direction of it using Poisson's ratio. Okay, next to move on to the next one. Look at here. This is compulsive, which is, which is of again reducing it. This is of tensile, but still along this direction it is reducing it. And this is of tensile, but along this direction, the direction which I am supposed to calculate is further reducing its dimension. So this is negative, and this is also negative, and this is also negative. The effective strain is going to be negative, right? So look at here, this, this is what exactly we need to understand. Stress along x, uh, x direction, yes, force by area, same thing. So force is 480 kilonewtons, right, x direction. So 480 kilo means 1000 divided by, what is the area of this? This is 100 into 80 mm, right? 100 mm by 80 mm. So that's what, 100 mm by 80 mm. 
So upon simplifying this one, we will be getting 16 newtons per mm square, which is of tensile nature. And the stress along a y direction, stress along y direction, sigma y that is equal to Fy by Ay. So uh, this is how much it is, what you call around uh, what it is, 1000 kilonewtons, but it is of compressive nature. 1000 into kilo means 1000 divided by what is the area? Area of uh, what you call the that particular block is called the look at here, this particular face. This is how much 100 by 250 mm. So is 100 by 250 mm upon simplifying this uh, 40 newton per mm square and the stress along z direction fz by az nothing but 900 kilonewtons so 900 into 1000 by 250 into 80 so this is the phase of uh, area of the that particular phase so effectively 16 newton per mm square along y direction which is of compressive 40 newtons per mm square and along z direction 45 newtons per mm square so this if i convert these all these uh, stress values into newton per meter square what I will be getting, see, mm square is nothing but 10 to, if I wanted to convert it to meter square, 10 to the power of minus 4, right, in denominator. If I take it to the numerator, it's going to be what? 10 to the power of 4, right? So that's what the straight away, I have added that step uh, straight away here, okay, direct step here, so 10 to the power of 4. So here, this is negative because it is not favoring. This is also reducing it, and this is also reducing. That is the reason you have specifically mentioned follow proper sign conventions, okay? So along this direction, 40 by E minus 60 into poison switch up because I need to convert into the lateral direction, right? For given the poison value of poison, 1 by M is equal to how much? So 0.25, so 0.25. And the other one is what? Uh, 45 into 0.25 by E. What is the, so this I need to convert into meter square, right? Newton per meter square. So total minus 66.25 into 10 to the power of 4 because uh, this is 10 to the power of 9. Uh, so this uh, ten, this I have converted into newton per meter square. That's the reason I got it. Ten to the power of four divided by two into ten to the power of nine. So upon simplifying this one, the value uh, I'm going to get it is zero point zero three three uh, mm. It must be mm square. Uh, this I will check it. Okay. So this is what what exactly I'm trying to emphasize here is the convention, the sign convention that we. Have. Okay. Hope you guys. Uh, hope you're all, you're all. Uh, understood uh, this uh, concept very clearly okay so this is about the simple numerical problems on this uh, next let's uh, let's move on to the rock mechanics portion of it now okay what are the tests that we will be conducting because in the earlier video lecture we discussed about uh, what you call various physical mechanical properties of the rock mass so in order to determine the uh, various physical mechanical properties of the rock mass for that <coughs> sorry, for that purpose we need to prepare the rock specimen as per ISRM standards. What is ISRM? ISRM is an international organization. Okay, it represents what? International Society for Rock Mechanics, which is a kind of what you call standard organ statutory organization worldwide, which will uh, take which will uh, you which is used to define certain standards so that. In the entire world, uh, uniformly, everyone should follow while for, while conducting various laboratory experiments. Okay, so what are the rock specimens that we use for testing purpose that must be prepared as per ISRM standards? Let us discuss what are those standards now. Okay, look at here the first one. The following are the various specifications used in preparation of rock specimen as per ISRM standards. The specimen used. For the preparation of the sample must be of nx size it must be of because the core sample that we will be getting of uh, by using diamond drilling okay is mainly in case of mining okay if you use the diamond drilling the size of the core sample that we will be getting that is of what nx size nx bx ax CX. there is a category there is a what you call the classification of core sample okay out of this uh, out of which we need to use in exercise next one the ends of the specimen, the specimen ends. So what exactly is specimen ends? Ends, ends is nothing but, uh, look at here. The, uh, okay, let me take clean. Yep. Let's say, uh, okay. let's say this. So this ends of the specimen, 
Yes. Ends of the specimen should be grinded to get a flat surface. We need to get very, very accurate flat surface. The surface must be very flat because to get on the very flat and it should be up to an accuracy of how much 0 0.025 mm that much accurate it must be very very flat so that whenever it is placed uh, on the platform of utm okay there should not be any gap that's what exactly it is okay next one the sides of the specimen this one to uh, what you call in 0.3 mm this enter it has to be straight to within how much the straightness must be 0.3 mm throughout its length throughout its length it must be perfectly straight okay and the perpendicular one, look here the ends of the specimen should be perpendicular to the sides with an accuracy of here also this portion how much it is 0.03 mm okay uh, let's move on Next one is uh, the, uh, the length to diameter, the ratio of length to the diameter of the sample should be more than two, L by D ratio. L is the length of the sample and D is the diameter of the sample. If you take the ratio of them, it must be more than that, more than two. There's nothing but the length of the sample must be more than, what exactly this represents guys? So the length of the sample L must be more than Two times of the diameter of the sample. Am I right? So means uh, what call it should not be less than the diameter. It must be two twice that of the diameter of the sample. So the ratio of uh, length to the diameter of the sample is known as slenderness ratio. This is very very important, guys. Uh, from any entrance point of view or from examination point of view, what is slenderness ratio? So while preparing a rock sample, okay, well, the ratio of the length to the diameter of the sample, that is the L by D ratio, is known as L by D ratio is known as a uh, slenderness ratio. Okay, so L, L by D ratio, it must be more than two. It must be more than two. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Okay, this is, uh, these are a few, what do you call, uh, uh, images which I have captured, uh, which basically friends uh, see here. This is, this is what the code that we will be getting from the field. Code samples, uh, okay. It, in uh, what kind of different while performing the rotary drilling along with the drive and drill bit, whatever the core you got it at various depths, okay. They are labeled with the uh, what called marked with respect to depths, and you know, they're uh, what you call uh, they will be they're packed into boxes. Those boxes, core sample boxes that will uh, those boxes are generally will purchase or will be brought to the laboratory for further testing, okay. These are these boxes contain the what you core sample, okay. Uh, that uh, that were corrected in the field. Next one. See, core require of Rx. Yeah, we discussed it. This is of in exercise. In exercise sample. So look at here how the sample. Because while they perform the drilling, it might have broken. There are some cracks, something like this. Definitely, right? So uh, these are the different samples. So from this sample, we need to what you call a prepare specimen. Unlike in you know, civil engineering, they will be doing what like some kind of what you call using cement and you know uh, sand mixture uh, by changing their proportion. They'll be preparing their sample, respect to some, uh, preparing sample in the laboratory, and they'll be, they'll be performing or some curing operation or something like that. And upon, upon uh, after completion of preparation of the sample, okay, they'll be performing the testing. But whereas in uh, coming to the mining engineering, in case of mining engineering, uh, the samples that were used, they are the samples are recovered from the field. That the samples recovered from the field. So that's what it is. Okay. So this this samples. Uh, okay, what we'll be doing is we'll be cutting the sample and we'll be performing what you call a grinding kind of thing so that it it meets the standards of ISRM standards. It meets the ISRM standards as we, as I mentioned earlier. Like what are the sample that we'll be using? Okay. It must be uh, must be according to the ISRM standards. Okay. This is about the core sample size. And uh, see, uh, before I move on to this, okay, let me show you some one video like uh, how the what you call sample preparation because sample preparation is very important. Uh, basically, like uh, uh, what you call how to perform the cutting and you know, uh, 
grinding operation in the laboratory. Okay, this uh, this video uh, gives uh, like how how they uh, how will be performing. Uh, what are the core samples that we collect in the field? Uh, how will uh, uh, what do you call? Uh, I will prepare the sample uh, to, so that you know we can take use in the laboratory. Okay, so look at here. It's a kind of what you call uh, cutting machine. Okay, uh, this person is uh, this person is uh, cutting the sample. So this is a kind of cutting machine here. He place the sample and he's trying to cutting it. Okay, see here. Got it. Then uh, see this is a sample which he cut. We, uh, it was uh, cut by him. While performing the cutting operation, we'll keep on what you call pour water because uh, while uh, whatever the blade that is rotating, right, it generates heat. So we need to cool it. Uh, we need to further cool it down. So further further there is a continuous uh, flow of water. Okay. So he is uh, doing that. So once it is done, then so this is about the cutting operation. Uh, next uh, move on to. What do you call this is a grinding operation. Look at here the grinding machine which is moving and is trying to flatten the surface of it. So that is called the, that is about the grinding operation. Look at here. So it's, uh, here is uh, perform some kind of grinding operation. So he is simultaneously pouring the water. Now here, uh, after a vertical cutting and grinding, is trying to measure vertical whether uh, vertical uh, we are uh, following the ISRM standards or not. Is trying to measure the length. See here, it is flattened or not? Is there any undulations or it is of quite flat? Because uh, whatever the ruler which is using, whether it is passing through the other side of it or not, is trying to measure that so that you now we can measure the flattening of the surfaces. That's what it is. This has been cut. Look at here. This is what the sample, you know, after cutting and you know grinding operation. So yep. So this sample will be using to carry out uh, for the testing operation. Look at here. Uh, is that? So he's trying to set the uh, vertical flat and by placing this uh, specimen over the, look at here, this is a dial, right? So he's trying to set a vertical check is that the surface, what is the surface, you know, that uh, that we have flattened it, whether it is flattened or not. So he's placing this uh, vertical, this portion of the dial at various locations of the sample and trying to see like, you know, is there any change in that, in this reading? Because we need to follow the standards and it has to be very, very accurate. So using this gauge kind of thing, and he is measuring, is trying to measure, is there any what you call change in the reading of the what you call the gauge that he has used, or the or the dial which he has used. If there is nothing different, obviously it uh, what you call it, it indicates what the uh, the specimen is prepared as per accurately and as per ISRM standards. So this is how this video basically depicts uh, what you call how exactly the what you call uh, cutting and you know grinding operations are the preparation of the rock specimen used in the laboratory to carry out the further uh, further uh, what you call testing guys okay so let's move on so the reason i have incorporated as part of uh, this video lecture uh, uh, that uh, as part of uh, that video as part of this video lecture because uh, if we don't have the facilities like laboratory testing uh, laboratory facilities in your uh, institution still uh, what do you call uh, 
by uh, by going through this video lecture you can understand that how exactly those uh, operations will be performed in the field it's a kind of what you call virtual uh, environment which i'm trying to create it like uh, so that you know at least you can visualize it how exactly the things will happen in the field okay next uh, like uh, i'll quickly complete uh, the uh, cover this topic like uh, how exactly uh, in uh, rock mechanics laboratory to perform any what to perform any vertical testing uh, to analyze the vertical mechanical properties of the rock sample or to carry out any kind of testing generally we will be using the machine that we will be using is of utm the term utm that itself indicates what it is about universal testing machine universal testing machine pratima <laughs> sorry you can carry out the multiple tests or multiple tests like tensile strength compression shear okay these are all the different testing or different tests you can carry out using a single machine that's why it is called universal test uh, what about testing machine okay let us try to understand what are the various components of it and you know, how it works and all okay let me uh, this okay look at here yep this is what ex how exactly the utm looks like this is a old one okay this is a old one the diagram which i am showing is the old one which i just uh, uh, took a snap of it uh, from a one of video lecture this is the kind of uh, vertical utm machine that uh, present in the laboratory okay it consists of total vertical four vertical columns two are of screwed one and uh, two are of vertical hydraulically operated one okay and there are three platforms okay um, lower bottom platform top platform and a middle platform okay this is everything this is called a loading machine whereas the one machine which is present on the other side that is called control unit this is the loading the loading part of it and this is a controlling part of it like the, because whatever the load the he wanted to apply hydraulically okay using by by operating these uh, what you call the various controls present on this one okay we can control it so that's what and there is another uh, graph paper so okay, using we here itself we can uh, determine we can uh, what you call the plot the graphs okay how exactly the stress versus strain stress strain graph how exactly it is being varying the application of different loads okay this is this picture basically gives uh, what do you call a view of what uh, how exactly the utm looks like okay look at here uh, let's see what are the various components of uh, uh, what do you call a utm loading machine so loading machine contains what as i said as this one a loading frame load cell cross head the control panel control panel are the one are the, the separate panel which is assigned to it Uh, adjacent to the loading unit that is called control panel hydraulic power unit load measuring unit controlling devices electric control devices electrolytic control uh, hydraulic control devices load indicating devices it basically indicates how much is the load that is acting so these are the different components which are part of universal testing machine okay look at the, this diagram basically another what you call the line diagram okay earlier what is the screenshot which i have showed uh, the that screenshot was captured from the laboratory uh, instrument uh, view of uh, the instrument uh, from the laboratory this is a skeleton diagram basically here if you look at right it consists of total three platforms the bottom middle and top one. okay so if you look at the old machines right in case of old machines actually uh, if you go through the almost uh, what you call 15 20 years back machine okay the middle one was fixed one and these two are movable like what you call the bottom and the top one but in uh, what you call new machines what happened right the uh, this middle one is movable one this is adjustable one latest machine shows this is a adjust one and these two are fixed okay so here between the bottom uh, what you call the platform and the middle platform you can carry out what you call the compression it's a space for compression nothing but you keep the specimen here and you can carry out the compressive uh, compressive stress operation and the space between the top and the, what you call the adjustable head adjustable cross head you can keep the specimen here and you know like uh, there will be one uh, kind of a device that you can keep it so that you know you can drag it so you know, to carry out the what you call tensile uh, tensile testing okay that's the reason this space is meant for uh, meant for to carry out the tensile uh, space or to carry out the tensile test operation whereas this space is meant for what the compression test operation and there will be a load cell which basically gives the re uh, reading which will be converted into the corresponding dial reading in the control panel like which basically gives how much is the load that will be acting on the specimen okay there is a cylinder which basically give uh, what can supply the required hydraulic fluid okay this is about the basic uh, skeleton diagram let me repeat it uh, re uh, reiterate the same it consists of three class platforms or cross heads one is called the lower one middle one is the adjust one and the top one is the tension one 
okay between the lower and the adjustable one middle one is uh, we can uh, this space is used to carry out the compressive testing operation whereas the between the middle one and the top one the space is being used to carry out the tensile operation okay so this is about the skeleton diagram of it this is the view which i uh, captured from the laboratory control panel as i said right your camera panel is a power pack control walls some then load indicator autograph recorder something like that next uh, working principle it's okay so it is a load control machine and works on the principle of elongation deformation of the material on the application of load okay basically we have from this uh, with the gradual application of load we can uh, measure what would be the deformation of the sample in various direction like longitudinal direction as well as the lateral direction so upon measuring the laterals nothing but change in deformation nothing but strain right upon measuring the what do you call uh, longitudinal strain and the lateral strain we can what call determine we can determine the poisson's ratio so by knowing the poisson's ratio deformation and the stress we can calculate what young smartness of this okay so to assess various rock properties uh, we can use tests we can use uh, different kinds of machines among them universal testing machine is one of the most widely used and versatile machine which can use which can measure compressive tensile shear strength direct shear strength is uh, uh, we can measure in an indirect way also okay tensile strength directly or indirectly using sample uh, oblique uh, specimen of rock mass the compressive strength can be assessed directly but for the tensile and strength we need to use different kind of cages or and calculation means we need to use the different devices for that tensile and shear strengths are conducted by indirect testing okay this is what i was talking about the old and the what you call the utms which are of old one in the old utms the lower cross head can be raised and lowered rapidly by operating the screws thus facility is the easy of e easy of fixing the test specimen whereas in the new etm uh, new utms lower one is fixed whereas the uh, middle one is the adjustable one see here new utms have a fixed table and the adjustable cross head moves up and down that's what it is so this is uh, another diagram Like a schematic diagram of it, as I said, this idle cylinder load the uh, load cell is a table. Okay, the lower platform adjustable cross head and the tension cross head and uh, screw collar. This one, and, uh, see, as I said, right, it consists of total four columns, two screw columns and two notched columns, which, which is of smooth one. Okay, so that you know it can uh, easily move, uh, it can slide over this uh, up and these uh, plates will be slide up and down. But this is about the control unit, control plant. so this is just uh, what you call another uh, schematic diagram of it and uh, this diagram it is a what you call latest manufactured machine the older one is what you call heavy heavy machine now it is a very smaller one it is a very compact and which is attached to a computer so that you know like we can record the, instead of taking a manual reading we can take what the automated reading in a very very precise manner okay so yeah with this uh, i'll conclude next class uh, we'll be discussing about how to perform various tests using utm okay thank you thank you very much